All right, so I'm a bad YouTuber, he says after not uploading a video for a few weeks. I was on vacation. Probably should have sat, had one or two in the tank, but uh, hindsight is 2020. But when I say that, I don't just mean my sound quality isn't the best and my video quality is kind of lacking. This is the cheapest camera I could find. No, I mean I haven't mastered the YouTuber ability to speak for 40 minutes and say nothing. It really just isn't in me to speak about nothing for that long. I could probably do a response video that's just as long to this 40 minute review of what went wrong in this fight scene in The Last Jedi. But I can probably sum up the mistakes the person was making in a sentence. The movements in these scenes were not about conveying an actual, accurate fight scene. The movements in these scenes were about conveying how each person deals with the Force. Kylo sort of blunt forces his way through things. Rey more goes with the flow of things. It's a depiction on the light side and the dark side of the Force. I don't even need to watch your video to know that you probably missed the point. And it took me a sentence to say that. Not that I'm hating on long-form content or anything. Hell, if you can make it entertaining, I don't care what you talk about. This is also why I don't tend to have a problem with the Reddit reader thing. Yeah, this is lazy, low-effort content, but at the same time, it is entertaining, and I want YouTube first and foremost to be entertained. If I can't entertain you, don't freaking watch me! Chat. I can't. Email. I cannot. Essay. I am unable to can. Term paper of 3,000 words. I do not find myself in the circumstances for it to be possible that I could potentially be able to have the capacity to do that. Dissertation. The author does not find the circumstances thus described to be advantageous enough to allow the author to have the potential to act in a way in their own capacity upon the course of the events that have previously described. Therefore, the author is unable to conform the conclusion that they are unable to can. So, I'm going to be calling episodes I'm a Bad YouTuber as basically my variety episodes where I have shit to say about a certain subjects, but I don't have enough to really stretch that out to a whole video. First up, did you hear about that controversy with Blizzard over the firing of that one Hearthstone guy over the Hong Kong thing? Yeah. For those that don't know, the pro Hearthstone player Blitzchung, I, I think that's how you say it, was banned by Blizzard. Although I might have been somewhat reversed, I might have heard something about that, but don't take my word for it. He got banned for saying a pro Hong Kong th thing during, like, after winning a tournament. I think I would have been fine with them doing this if it was taken as more a we just don't want to be political sort of thing. But then they came out with something about how they want to respect the dignity of China or something, and I'm just like, oh god, that's a little dicey. If you just say, look, we just don't want to be political, and that's why we're banning this. We don't want anyone saying anything political in our, our things. I would be cool with that. I understand the desire to want to remain apolitical. Based on the story as I understand it now, I side much more with this Blitzchung guy, and maybe we'll be partaking in that boycott. They don't really have anything that I'm that interested in right now. But, hey... Although Blizzard siding with China here does explain why they consider this moral ambiguity. Speaking of Blizzard though, after I did that WoW's lore video sucks, I did think of one other thing that I kinda liked about the lore. In the game, there's this race called the Draenei? I think that's how you pronounce it. They're demons, but not really. Whose name apparently means exiled ones. Meaning their name is somewhat synonymous with another group, the Forsaken. The undead, but not zombies. To be forsaken means to be abandoned or rejected. To be exiled means to be ostracized or displaced. So they mean somewhat of the same thing, only one's used in a more emotional context and one is more of a political thing. Anyway, I like this because one race lacks like this. What joy is there in this curse? And the other acts like this. Each day is a blessing. It just goes to show you it's not what happens to you that makes you miserable, it's your attitude towards it. As Shakespeare once said, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. I don't think this is ever brought up in the game as being intentional though, so it's again another one of those that would be cool if you were doing that on purpose. Although still, I guess Moby Dick wasn't about man's struggle against nature until someone pointed that out to Herman Melville, so whatever. 
Next is going to be a quick, some quick responses to YouTube videos I saw, because, well, I don't see anyone else doing it. The first is a clip from a channel called Knowing Better, who's probably one of the best people are putting out social studies content. Anyway, he has this video on social justice and feminism, and there's just this one part that I take issue with. I've been playing Division 2 a lot recently, and it took me a while to realize that the female characters are wearing just as much gear and armor as the male characters. You might be thinking, yeah, obviously, why wouldn't they? And I'd remind you that that wasn't always the case. It took us a long time to get here. Yeah, the problem with this is you're comparing a grounded realistic setting like Rainbow Six to a stylized fantasy affair. It'd be more fair to compare Rainbow Six to something that's also for going for a more grounded setting, something like Half-Life 2, which, yeah, she's dressed fine. Inversely, compare WoW to something more like a, a more modern stylized fantasy affair, like Smite, which, yeah. In fairness, that is Aphrodite, goddess of shipping culture. It's not like that's an inaccurate depiction. Next bit is from a YouTuber called Hello Future Me. He puts out good content on storytelling advice and the like. This is a, from his video on the psychology of Azula, which is a good video overall. I just have one tiny quibble. But we should not be too quick to attribute this to a disorder. If something can be more easily explained in psychology by simple environmental factors, then it should be. You ever hear the old social worker joke? The first social worker goes, don't blame Timmy, he comes from a broken home. The second one goes, yeah, Timmy could break any home. The problem with the idea that we should blame environmental factors before genetics is that it flies on the face of the evidence. At least half of all personality traits can be linked to genetic factors. This is exacerbated by the fact that children tend to share genes with their parents and these create these situations that you are talking about. All behavioral traits are at least in part genetic. And no, there's usually not one gene for being a psychopath. There's, a lots, there's lots of little genes that lead you to that point, point. I just don't think it's accurate to say that we should blame environmental causes. No, we should blame what is likely the cause. It could be environmental or it could not be. It could be environmental, or it could be genetic. It's more likely to be a mixture of both, and ignoring the genetic thing because you don't like the implications isn't going to actually help. Y'all see that controversy about that new she show? Yeah, that was stupid. Now, did anyone actually watch the show? I did, and yeah, it's good for the age group it's going for. One thing I did like is out of the three main characters, the level-headed reasonable one was the guy. I don't know, for whatever reason, it seems like this kind of show, the guy tends to be immature to beyond the point of childishness. And it's just refreshing to see the guy as being basically the adult. Whatever, if you want a detailed breakdown, find someone who cares one way or the other. I know they said something about how it's like a show meant for little girls, but I think it's just as likely to appeal to little boys. Men tend to not show much of a preference between male protagonists and female protagonists. If it's a good show or a good story, they don't tend to give a shit. Women tend to show a slight preference towards other women, and that's fine, I guess. But yeah, I would say despite the fact that they say it's for little girls, I think it appeals just as much to little boys. Moving on. I haven't seen Joker yet, but I'm guessing by the conversation surrounding it, I won't like it. It just seems like the kind of movie that has a visual style while being a completely blank slate otherwise. We all know how much I love blank slates. Maybe it's transcendently good, I don't know, I'll give it a shot. lessons from fiction, it's just important to recognize how much of our worldview is defined by fiction and to be suspicious of any conclusions we draw from those parts. No we don't. People are not nearly as gullible as you'd like to believe. Here's a meta-analysis that breaks this down better than I ever could, but people actually tend to have pretty good BS detectors. Paywall on that, but here's a Twitter thread that breaks it down. To put this another way, when's the last time a fact changed anyone's mind? Okay, why do you think Mickey Mouse can? That's about all I feel like getting into right now, um... I'm still figuring out what I want to do with this channel. I don't like getting overly political, so that's out. Reviews, critiques, or think pieces, whatever you want to call them, are fun. I don't know. Do you two have to imitate everything you see on TV? Um, we're 12, so yes.